from the belly of the news beast in lower Manhattan, uh, just across uh, the river from Brooklyn, which if you're watching on the AFA channel, that's the skyline of uh, the uh, borough of Brooklyn. Uh, we are AFA today on AFR Talk, Kevin McCullough. And I want to make sure that I uh, uh, speak very clearly here that uh, many of my opinions are, are merely mine. They do not represent... Uh, I'm a, I'll let uh, AFA management speak for the position of AFA. That is not uh, that is uh, always to be understood uh, on this broadcast. But I, I'm just asking a question. I'm not even making uh, a harsh generalization, as Stephen accused me of. Um, what what I'm doing is asking a question. Uh, we were told uh, out of the blue uh, two days ago on the front page of Christianity Today dot com's website. Uh, why World Vision will hire gays and approve same-sex marriage. That was the headline. Then two days go by, and now the headline has changed uh, dramatically. Uh, It's in the opposite direction, reverses decision to hire Christians in same-sex marriages. Uh, I read to you verbatim the quotes in the article from Richard Stearns as to uh, what they felt and I said initially when I linked to this story on social media that I um, was glad of their decision. I think it's the right decision to make. Now, I'm noticing in the Facebook comments and I'm noticing on some of the, the calls that there's, there's a desire to just immediately go back and give them a clean slate, just to say, okay, they said the right thing, boom, they get, they get full credit again. Uh, I'm sorry, life doesn't work that way. Uh, it can work that way for God. And in the realm of forgiveness, we can forgive them immediately, and forgiving them is releasing them of the consequence of their actions, okay? So I forgive you. I don't hold that against you anymore. When when you made that decision, I didn't understand it, but now I've forgiven you. I've released you of uh, of the impact of that decision. Now, that is an entirely wholly separate issue than saying, but... Am I going to replace you up on this pedestal that we had you on so that you now have the credibility that you had before? That's a different issue. For releasing you of consequence for what you did, that's one thing. But giving you entire credibility, and friends, for those of you that want to argue about the biblical uh, importance of this, think about Scripture themselves. Uh, how an elder conducts himself and how a spiritual leader is to be viewed. Uh, y- you don't get, uh, when, when you make a big and bold decision that, that influences many, many people, Book of James uh, teaches that uh, teachers will be held to a higher standard than the learners, right? So world vision on some level, big stage, big visibility, they step up and they say, this is what we're doing, boom. Now, I'm glad of their decision to reverse. I want that to be a good move in the right direction and long-term health. But I'm also not going to uh, pretend to not see and hear what I should be seeing and hearing. And friends, we would not be biblical people if we we chose that as well. So when he says... Our real problem here was that we were trying to create unity and we created division... That's not true, Richard. That's not true. You divided not Christianity into different parts. You divided yourself from Christianity. That was the division that you created. So this this perception that you have that that you uh, created division between Christians that's not that's not really the case. You just separated yourself from the rest of Christianity. That that was that was where uh, that went. He said that uh, we acknowledge the policy change we made was a mistake. And we believe that the World Vision supporters helped us to see that with much more clarity. Well, if you're a really large leader, why why do you need thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of constituents to come to you and say, hey, this you're making a mistake here? How does an entire board of people – and I know there were board members that weren't on board with the decision that they made. So there was there were people speaking truth. My sense is there's something more that's got to be – that's got to be done here. You, you've got to address – the sources of the bad information, and you've got to deal with those. Because I don't, if it's a board member, if it's Mr. Stearns himself, if it's somebody else, th- those people haven't come clean yet. Those people haven't said, yes, I was the one who said that uh, we should embrace same sex marriage. 
And World Vision should make a decision. Are we going to allow that element to continue to participate as part of our board, or should we find people that actually reflect the statement that we have put out in terms of our statement of faith that will adhere to the biblical definition? I mean, this is not a, a, this is not a particularly hard case to decide. This is very simple. Scripture is not confused here. Even though there are some in Christendom that would like to create confusion amongst others. All right, back to the phones we go. Let's talk to uh, Mel in Oregon. Mel, you're up next. Welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough. Glad you're with us. Oh, thank you. Mel, go right ahead. Oh, okay. I, yeah, this is Mel Galley, and uh, I was just wanted to explore what you're saying. I think that's great. I think the one caller that was worried about you chastising him, God bless him, but I know we were just at a man camp, and, you know, we don't want to be nice guys. We want to step out and confront people, and that's what a real man does. And uh, I know our church has had to go in and to Africa, and uh, we're not a real big church, but we go over there and do things, and we've had to take uh, programs like World Vision drop them and go and do the work ourselves because we were doing it way cheaper and we do it what God wants. All right, Mel. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. 888-589-8840. Uh, does the letter that I read to you from Richard Stern satisfy uh, where your heart is at with World Vision? 888-589-8840. Let's talk to uh, Jody in North Carolina. Hi, Jody. Hi, good afternoon. And um, I want to say that I kind of understand where Mr. Stephen was saying, but also I want to remind him as well as our, our listeners that I don't have any children as yet, but if I have children in the house and one of them did something out of line and that one is repented of it, I think as, a, as parents, my husband and I, we can have a family gathering and talk about, you know, what God expects of us and what we're not going to tolerate so others can hear, you know, and I think that yeah, you forgive them, but we shouldn't. We should also let our listeners know about it. Our Christian um, 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 friends and family know what's going on, so they can be, you know, they're sleeping. They can, you know, hopefully, you know, be enlightened by this. And so, yeah, we'll forgive them, but we shouldn't be silent because if it's not them, it's gonna be another Christian organization. So we have to nip it in the bud. And not everyone has been led by the Holy Spirit. So. I think we should talk about this, and we shouldn't be silent about it. As Christians, we don't want to be an appeaser of, of men, but we want to appease God. So, Stephen, I understand what you're saying, but you also have to bring to light that there's many children of God around the world, some who may not you know, have heard the news, and we want to bring it to their attention. That's all I'm saying. Jody, I appreciate your call. And, and I'm, I'm not saying much differently than you were, the, the point being that um, I, I still think some of the underlying issues that created that situation have not been addressed by their public statement. And, and that's the part I'm more curious about. The fact that they reversed course, to be candid, I'm not really surprised by. I, I kind of anticipated, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure you knew about it. I figured that you would speak up. I figured that there would be some degree of care that uh, the, the, the Christian body would say, hey, wait, this is important. We're not going to just, like, uh, ignore this. So I was grateful for the opportunity to um, make you aware of it so that you could address it and be, uh, you know, be wholehearted in, in uh, what you wanted to say. I also think it's only doing fair due diligence to come back and say, hey, they did reverse course. But at the end of the day, has the underlying issue that created the problem to begin, has that really been solved? And in their public statement, which is the only statement we have to really judge this by, uh, I don't think anything has been resolved. They didn't say we were in error of, of uh, uh, you know, um, they said we weren't consistent. We didn't, we didn't consult with enough people. We failed to, uh, to be consistent with our view of Scripture. Well, how does all of that happen? Someone is, is teaching or putting error into people's minds and is saying, uh, no, the, the, the Bible's wrong there. You should discount the biblical authority in that, in that, in that arena. 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. Let's go to Jimmy in South Carolina. Hi, Jimmy. Yes, sir. What I, what I say is if you go in the grocery store and steal a pack of 
mistake and you run out the door with it and you get caught and you say, oh, I'm so sorry, and here's the state fact, that still don't, don't not make you a thief and you still got to pay the judge and the court fees. Well, and that's a really good principle, uh, Jimmy. And, and, and again, this is where I think uh, Stephen and some other people get a little confused about what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is not just saying, uh, okay, we pretended like it never happened before. Um, forgiveness is releasing them of the spiritual consequence of, of the matter. It's, it's, it's saying, uh, I release you of, of, of being under spiritual consequence for that. And let me give you an example. I'm in youth group. Uh, well, no, I was a kid, very small kid, uh, not even in junior high yet, maybe fifth grade when I was growing up. And uh, there was a, a boy and a girl who got pregnant in our youth group. And they were well known. They, he was the star basketball player at the local high school. And she was uh, someone that, you know, was in music and was very visible. And and uh, they ended up getting married and, and they have a beautiful family to this day. They have many. I think they have eight or nine kids, but they got pregnant. They were still in high school. Uh, they were asked to come before the church, admit what they did, and put themselves under the, the leadership and the authority of the, uh, of the elders of our church. And they did that. And the church embraced them and helped them and walked through with them. They, we supported them as they got married. There were all these things that the church did uh, in response to demonstrate that forgiveness. But one thing was very, very clear. Doing it did not make her unpregnant. The baby still came. The consequences of that action and the, and the difficult life that they had as young married people and young adults very, very early in life, much earlier than all of their peers, all of those consequences still came to bear. It, it did not stop the consequences to forgive them. They were fully forgiven. In fact, because they were forgiven, they probably endured some of those consequences better than they would have without that. At the end of the day, the consequences still existed. They were as sorry as sorry could be. They were still pregnant. The baby still came. You still had to deal with life as it existed in that reality. And that's why I'm saying it's important for us to understand how uh, World Vision came to that decision. Because if, if, if they're using the same logic for other decisions, maybe I shouldn't be supporting them. Whether they reverse course on this issue or not, that's, that's a completely separate matter. I want to know where their heart is. I want to know what their mindset is. I want to know... Uh, you know, why the board came to that decision and how it got so far afield and why they're going to continue to have the discussion going forward. 888-589-8840. Let's talk to uh, Axel calling from West Virginia next. Hi, Axel. Hey, how are you doing today, Kevin? Good. Appreciate you being here. Uh, thank you very much for taking my call. Uh, I simply want to comment on the whole world vision issue and kind of bring to light uh, something that hasn't been completely commented on, and that's the issue of accountability. And I liken it to, you know, in a church setting, if you you come to somebody that's out here in the world being led astray and and they're sinning and then they come and they consult with their friends and stuff for forgiveness and everything, you know, that individual needs to be led to Christ. But when you're in a position of power like that and you're in the in the church, you've already asked for forgiveness, you're supposed to be on the path, and then you screw up, people have to hold you accountable for what you've done. And with an organization like this, people have trusted them for, you know, however long and, and been many, many years. money and yeah. everything else. And, yeah. and then this individual shows his complete lack of leadership in it and his non-devotion to the faith that the organization is supposed to be proclaiming. And now we as Christians have to hold him accountable and say, look, you're going to have to prove now beyond a shadow of a doubt through continual actions, not just a simple Oh, I'm sorry. Let's slap me forgiveness and... does not immediately bring trust and credibility back, is what right, you're saying, exactly. and that yeah. happens through the accountability process. Right. Yeah. No, I got you, Axel. Good stuff. Eight 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 five eight nine eight eight four zero. Let's see if we can squeeze in a couple more. Peter in Texas. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good. You're on with Kevin McCullough. Yes. Hey, Kevin. Uh, just wanted to kind of illustration, and it's along the lines of what you're talking about. If if my pastor got up in the pulpit on a Sunday morning and said, hey, you know what, I've been thinking, and the Bible isn't God's Word. There's a lot of words of God uh, that uh, things about marriage, things about homosexuality, things about the virgin birth, all these things. And, of course, then the congregation, because it's a Bible-believing church, is going to go nuts. He comes back next Sunday and says, well, I don't know what I was thinking. I was wrong. I'm sorry. 
we ought to gather around and, and put our arms around him and love him. But we also need to say, whoa, you're not ready to get back. In but the he doesn't get to preach for a few weeks, a minimum. Uh, a few weeks, you're being generous. I mean, you know, yeah. minimum. Uh, bottom line is, is you know, I, we love you and we'll help you. But the bottom line is there's something going on that is, is very core. And, and this is an organization that ministers Christ to other people. If they're not on, on their truth, then, then, then that means their ministry is off as well. Very possible that you're speaking exact truth. Let's go to Danny, also in Texas. Danny, welcome. You're on with uh, Kevin McCullough. Hi. Good afternoon, uh, Kevin. God bless you. I just want to say one thing, and it's that what I would like to see from our world vision is that they put in writing in their website and what they believe that the tenets of Christianity. Basically, the tenets of Christianity as something that they will not deviate from. Well, and Danny, I, I, I hate to cut you off, but I do believe that that already existed on some level uh, because th- that's what was brought to mind when they were told that they were in error on it. So uh, we'll just have to, uh, uh, if not, I'll, I will actually look up their website and see and report back to you on whether or not they have a uh, ministry declaration of faith or something like that. Anyway, uh, Kevin McCullough, guys, thank you for being here. Uh, tomorrow, unless I hear differently, uh, I will discuss... Uh, Noah with you full on. We'll just we'll just go for it. I'll tell you all the objections. I'll tell you what I saw in the premiere. Let you ask all the questions you want to, and we'll just go at it uh, tomorrow on AFA Today, and then and then you can decide for yourself what you want to do this weekend. Calvin McCullough, glad you're with us each day here on AFA Today on AFR Talk. <laughs>